Hey guys, what is up, and welcome back to the channel. So, just made a video predicting the Steelers' record for the 2021 season. If you didn't see it, go check it out. This is going to be talking about the Steelers' initial depth chart. So, there's not a whole lot of surprises here. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, listed as QB1. Um... Who else? Guys like Minka being the top free safety. Um, you got TJ Watt being um, one of the starting linebackers. Uh, according to that, he's the will linebacker. Uh, Cameron Hayward being the right DN. So, you know, there's not a whole lot of surprise here. And then you get into the... Um, like this, you know, second, third string, and fourth, and guys who are really going to have to struggle to make the roster. So, uh, we're going to talk about it, and review it a little bit, and give my thoughts. So, we'll start with quarterback, we'll start at the top, and just go all the way down. Ben Roethlisberger, this isn't much of a surprise. Uh, this, this is a bit of a side note, I think this is Ben's last year. I do. I think I think this is it. It's this year, win or lose, and he's done. You know, he, out, he outlasted the other quarterbacks from the 2004 draft. Uh, and then second right now is Mason Rudolph. Now, camp in preseason, it's pretty much a way to test... Not usually your starting quarterback, because you get players like Mahomes, Brady, Rodgers, Allen, Wilson. Guys who are, like, you know they're the starter. Um, Dak, Derek Carr, there's guys where you know they're the starter. And then second, third, and potentially even fourth can figure themselves out. So, right now, Mason Ruff is listed as a second. I've heard some stuff about the battling going on between Mason and Dwayne, mostly. Uh, I've heard some stuff about Mason struggling. Uh, Dwayne, he had a very bad pick, I guess, against, I think it was James Pierre. And we'll... We'll talk about him when we get down to the corners. So, we'll see how that folds out. Um, haven't heard much about Josh. I think I saw one thing that said, you know, he had a good day. But one day doesn't guarantee you jack squat. I will say Mason Rudolph is the only quarterback that um, is under contract. Not for 2021. For the 2022 season. The season after this upcoming. He is the only quarterback on the roster. That's under contract for that season. Running back. To see Najee Harris here. It's not a surprise that running back one. He's the guy I wanted. I've seen pictures. Of the catches he's made. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, and then Benny Snell, Anthony McFarland, and Jalen Samuels. CJ Sam at the end at four, it's not a surprise to me. Um, Benny and Anthony, I think that's the order I expected as well. I heard Anthony gained a little bit of weight, but not the bad weight. He, he gained good weight. He gained muscle weight. Uh, and that he's been doing overall pretty well. It's quarter to 11. I'm fighting off yawns after working a nine hour shift. Yeah, nine. So I worked a nine hour shift today. I'm a little tired. Uh, wide receivers. So it's more or less going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, so number one is going to be Juju. Number two, Chase. Number three, Deontay. That's a pretty standard order 
four being James Washington. Yeah. Uh, Ray, Ray Ray McLeod, number five. From there to there. Good. You expect that. So now you got Cody White. Then Rico Bussi? Busse? I don't know how to pronounce that name. You got Rico, then Anthony Johnson, Isaiah McCoy, and then Matthew Sexton and Tyler Simmons. And actually, Matthew Sexton, his first name is spelled the same way as mine, mm -hmm. with just the one T. So, um, I would love for him to make the roster. I hear he's fast, but it's probably not going to happen. You're, you're going to have five, maybe six receivers. So, that... Say you had six. That sixth wide receiver spot is going to come down to probably between Cody, Rico, Anthony, and Isaiah. Let's be honest. Uh, let's see. Then you got Eric Ebron, Pat Fryermuth, Zach Gentry, Kevin Rader. And they signed another guy and got rid of Dax Raymond, I believe his name is. So, Ebron... Fryermuth and Gentry, that's that's your order that you expect. Eric being the veteran, Pat the uh, second round draft pick, who I hear has been doing very, very well at camp. And then Zach Gentry, you know, the former quarterback, sixth round draft pick, fifth, sixth, late round draft pick um, at tight end. So, and then Kevin Rader. So, I don't expect Kevin to make a push, at least not a huge one, for Zach's job. The new guy, who the hell knows? Uh, fullback, Derek Watt. He is our one and only fullback. That's it. And then, the offensive line went more or less how I was expecting, except for center. So, Chukumo core for at left tackle... Left guard, Kevin Dotson. Center, J.C. Hassenauer. Right guard, Trey Turner. Right tackle, Zach Banner. So, I expected the order of this to actually be reversed. B.J. Finney, then Kendrick Green, and then J.C. Uh, J.C., just, I don't know about him. I don't. So, B.J. Finney... I mean, he was good before he left, so maybe my expectations are those of before he left. And then uh, you got Dan Moore, BJ had left back up left guard, um, and it's a lot of these guys are guys I don't know. Like I know the five starters: Dan Moore, the recent draft pick. B.J. Finney, Kendrick Green, the the draft pick, and pretty much everyone else, I have no idea who they are. So it's hard to speak on that. Just because when you think about it, how many times do you know an offensive lineman that's a rookie, first year, second year guy, young player, that went to a small school, late round, undrafted. Like, you really don't know much about these guys because you're just not watching them. You're not. You're watching the quarterback. You're watching the running back. You're watching the receivers, the tight end. So I just don't know much about them. Then you got to it. Alu Alu, Cam Hayward on the uh, as your big D lineman. No surprise. Um, then Chris Wormley. One finally got out. Chris, Chris Wormley at, uh, DN number two. That's not a surprise. Isaiah Bugs is actually a nose tackle here. I think last year he was a D end. Or maybe he made the transition to D tackle, but I thought he was a D end first. And then Carlos Davis, who he was a D tackle last year. Then at right D end, one guy I I just don't like. I I don't like him as a player. I don't 
know anything about him personally. So it's not that I don't like him personally, I just don't like him as a player. Henry Mundo, I don't. Uh, he's ahead of the rookie Isaiah Loudermilk, fifth round draft pick. I, I just don't like Mundo as a player. I saw him play last year, and I'm just like, no. Like I said, TJ, obvious at uh, starter. Then Cassius behind him. Quincy Roche, the rookie. Uh, we'll skip the inside linebackers for now. We'll, we'll come back to it. Alex Highsmith, Melvin Ingram, and Jameer Jones. So to see Cassius and Melvin as the backup outside linebackers, not a surprise. And then you get the sixth round draft pick, Quincy Roche. I think he went to Miami. All right, so now at, we go to the inside linebackers. Now, Vince Williams, he retired. So, Devin Bush, still the starter, with Spillane next to him. So far, you're good. Then Ulysses Gilbert the third. Then Marcus Allen. You're still doing pretty good. Then Buddy Johnson, who was the fourth-round draft pick. To Gray Scales. Don't know much about him. Calvin Bundage. I don't know much about this guy, but I've seen people on Twitter rave about him. Like, they're excited about this guy. The same guy that got cut in order to make room for Melvin Ingram on the roster. Then when Williams retired, he got re-signed. So, I have no idea. And then Jarvis Miller. Again, no idea. Alright, so at corner, you're going to have Joe Hayden, then Cam Sutton. Again, we're going from left to right, and we're skipping the safeties for now. So, Hayden and Sutton, so far we're good. James Pierre and Justin Lane, we're good. Antoine Brooks Jr. So he is being counted as a corner this year, not a safety. Then Arthur Mullet, Demarcus AC, and Mark Gilbert. Mark Gilbert is actually the cousin of Darrell Rivas, interesting enough. So I expect Hayden, Sutton, Pierre, and Lane to all make the roster. Uh, Brooks, I believe, is going to make a push for the starting nickel job. We'll see how that goes. Everyone else, I don't know much about. Safeties, Terrell Edmonds, Minka Fitzpatrick, we're good. I like. I know those are the starters. Then you got Miles Killebrew, who they signed from the Lions. Trey Norwood, who um, is a seventh round pick, and he went to Oklahoma. Mike Tomlin, when he announced the draft pick, actually said utility knife. So he's kind of like an all around DB kind of player, which is going to be interesting to see. And then Lamont Wade and Donovan Stint Steiner. Again, no idea who those guys are. Uh, but as far as safety, you're probably looking at Killebrew and Norwood. And maybe Brooks if he doesn't win the nickel job and they haven't playing safety again. Uh, special teams. So you have Chris Boswell. That's it. Sam, I'm sorry. You're a camp leg. Uh, hopefully, though, so I hope for your success, someone signs you. Uh, so then punter Jordan Barry, Barry, and then Presley Harvin the third is currently listed as the second. Uh, I did see on Twitter he had like a 70-yard punt. He won the Ray Guy Award this previous season, which is given to the best punter in college football. I mocked him to the Steelers. Sup? I actually got the first pick and the last pick right. Najee and Harvin. So, um, that's going to be an interesting battle. I hope Presley wins that. If he does, Barry will be cut, and he'll be the holder. So, holder's not really important. Uh, and then you got Ray Ray McLeod as the punt returner and kick returner. No real surprise. Then Deontay as punt return. Uh, that one, he... I'd like to stick with Ray Ray, please. Uh, if Matthew Sexton makes the roster, maybe he could punt return or kick return. We'll see. And then Anthony McFarlane. And James Pierre is the third for both of those. And then long snapper, Cam Canada. Um, just 
He's the long snapper. I believe he's the only long snapper on the roster, at least according to the depth chart. The job's his. So there are a few where it's like, yeah, the job's yours. Like, that's it. And then, uh, looks like the Steelers have a lot of guys who are questionable. Eric, JC, Zach, Anthony, Devin, and, it, and then uh, Brooks. I did see that Kendra Green will be getting the start at the Hall of Fame game. So that's where this is an initial depth chart. Obviously, once the season starts, you cut down to 53, you rearrange your depth chart, and bing, bam, boom, there you go. So I can react to that one as well. Uh, as you know, what you used to do is cut from 90 to 75, 75 to 53, and then they said, just go from 90 to 53. And then last year, they said, hey, you got to go down to 80 because COVID. So now we're going to be going from 90 down to 53 again, and we'll... We'll get to that point when we get there. But thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of the Steelers' depth chart down below. Uh, if you think there's going to be any big moves, like Dwayne hopping over Mason for the backup. Uh, if you think that uh, Isaiah's going to pass Mundo. If you think uh, BJ's going to be the starting center. If you say that Matthew Sexton or Rico's going to be like the fourth receiver ahead of Jane. Like, you know, if you think there's going to be anything that's huge, let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like on your channel. Please hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on. See you guys next video. Later.